check the facts. Today we are going to learn about this first topic of the chapter Changing Emotional Responses, an important part of emotional regulation skills. Fact checking can help us to change our powerful emotional reactions through changing our beliefs, influencing them, and shaping our behaviors as well. Now, let's begin with the word fact. It comes from Latin factum, meaning an event, occurrence, date, achievement. While the main modern sense of saying known to be true from notion of something that has actually occurred is from 17th century. According to Oxford Dictionary, fact is a particular situation that exists. It is used to refer to a thing that is known to be true, especially when it can be proved. It could refer to an objective consensus on a fundamental reality. Information about a particular subject, especially actual conditions, for example, there is no doubting the fact that the Earth orbits the Sun or the Earth is round. What can we say regarding the facts about the Earth? The ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras around 500 BCE argued that the Earth must be spherical like the moon. Isaac Newton first proposed that the Earth is not actually a sphere, but an oblate spheroid. Is the Earth flat or round? What does the Earth science say about that after accurately measuring? Does geodesy represent the figure of the Earth as an oblate spheroid? Is this a fact or an opinion? A fact is a statement that is true and can be verified objectively or proven. An opinion, however, is a statement that holds an element uh, of belief or tells how someone feels. It is not always true and cannot be proven. In order to understand better why talking about facts is important. Prior to the transition to the new topic, let's remember the main goals of emotion regulation. Covered on the previous videos and on handouts from first to six. And the goals are to understand and name your own emotions and to decrease the frequency of unwanted emotions, emotional vulnerability, and emotional suffering. You have learned that we need emotions as they help species to survive, motivate us for actions, communicate to others and to ourselves. But what can make it hard to regulate them are biological factors, a lack of skills, reinforcing emotional behavior, modernized emotional overload, or myths about emotions and rumination. Why we need to observe and describe emotions while being very specific about the emotion and emotional events? It is to improve ability to regulate emotions, to be separate from emotions, to learn to be one with emotions. So 
we will be able to describe them with words related to anger, disgust, envy, fear, happiness, jealousy, love, sadness, shame, guilt, etc. To describe emotions, you use those several steps included in a system as emotions are complex, full system responses, and they consist of several parts or reactions happening at the same time. Prompting events, attention and awareness, interpretation of the prompting events, vulnerability factors, biological changes, experiences, expressions. It is important to emphasize that if we change any part of this system, we can change the entire response. And the next part of the emotion regulation model is about changing emotional responses. It begins from Emotion regulation handout seven. What kinds of skills do we need in order to change unwanted emotions? There are three main skills. Check the facts, opposite action, and problem solving. Check the facts. Checking out the facts first and changing beliefs and assumptions about situations to fit the facts is a basic strategy in cognitive and other forms of therapy, as this helps us change our emotional response to it. This sometimes could be all we need for changing the emotional responses. There's two other skills, opposite action. Sometimes we know the facts, but knowing does not change our emotions. When this happens and emotions do not fit the facts, we could try acting opposite to our emotions repeatedly all the way. This could be compared to the old saying, if you fall off a horse, get right back on. Problem solving. If our emotions fit the facts of the situation, then in order to change the emotions, we need to solve the problem, which is the situation itself. A barrier to changing emotions could be something we often think or even say, yes, but, Changing emotional responses could be challenging as it requires an ability to determine what is in our own best interest, willingness and efforts as well. When emotional intensity is high, even realizing that our own feelings are invalid, our typical response to someone who is trying to help could be yes, but unfortunately, it does not help us to resolve the issues or feel better. Then we should remind ourselves that the only possible option are the following four responses. First, to solve the problem, by changing or leaving the situation. Second, to change the emotional reaction to the situation by reducing painful emotions even when the problem remains. Third, to radically accept the situation by acknowledging that we cannot change the situation or the way we are feeling and willingly and completely accept this while getting a sense of freedom and suffering less. Or, fourth, to stay miserable and even making things worse. 
what would we like to choose? Facts. We often react to our thoughts and interpretation of the events rather than to the fact of the events. So, changing our interpretation to fit the facts can change our emotional reactions. Remember how you describe emotions we previously mentioned from Emotional Regulation Handout 6 and how the event and interpretation from specific emotions. You can think of our own experiences as examples. Um, it may be useful to review the model of describing emotions on handout five. You can rate intensity of emotions from zero to 100 from no emotion to maximum emotion intensity before and after checking the facts. Notice that you can use two steps in changing the facts using two sections, writing down the description of the situation and the, <clears throat> the interpretation and considering alternative thoughts and interpretation and describing of the facts. Why should we check the facts? What are the principles behind? First, as uh, mentioned, thoughts and interpretations of situations or events, not the facts themselves, can set off painful emotions. Beliefs about reality can cause painful emotions. Faulty beliefs about our needs can lead to difficult emotional experiences. Faulty beliefs about situations can cause new unpleasant problems. Extreme thinking, for example, black and white, all or none, either or thinking, can set off extreme emotions. Second, our emotions can uh, affect what we think about events and how we react to thoughts. Our mood or temporary emotions can influence our perceptions, ideas, memories, uh, even interpretations of the reality, particularly when the situations are um, ambiguous or too complex. Depending on our current emotional state, the same situation can look completely different. Third, a belief that our thoughts are the absolute truth or the reality itself can cause a lot of issues, even global disasters. It is important for us to know that there is more than one way to look at things. Something could be valid even if we don't agree with it. The absolute truth is no one's possession. Moreover, two things that like opposite can be true at the same time, or truths may evolve over time. Fourth, in order to solve problems, knowing the facts is essential. Faulty beliefs about facts can interfere with an appropriate problem solving. Fifth, our emotions can be changed by examining our thoughts and checking the facts. Our emotions can be changed after learning the correct facts if they were based on incorrect ones. If we know actual facts, this can help in adequate problem solving of emotionally loaded situations. How can we check the facts? We can ask six main questions. First, what is the emotion I want to change? If you don't know what emotion or set of emotions you are feeling, 
it is more difficult to change it. Fact about the situation can fit one emotion, but not another. It would be useful to pay attention to thoughts, posture, physical sensations, actions, and action urges, verbal statements, when trying to describe emotions. Second, what is the event prompting my emotion? Describe the facts, just the facts, observed through the senses and change absolute descriptions and extremes because more balanced view may change emotions. The prompting event could be external but also internal such as a previous emotion, series of thoughts, or ability to do a task. Our own actions can also elicit emotions. For example, joy after winning a competition. Describing emotion, thoughts, or actions in judgmental language can be an ineffective way of doing that as it can evoke strong negative reactions. Even our mental description of the event, not the event itself, can become a prompting event. Third, what are my interpretations, thoughts and assumptions about the event? We often jump to a conclusion and act on that. We add to what we observed and after that, rather than to what we have observed, we react to what we have added. Can we think about feeling a particular emotion and then having some erroneous interpretation we might make and then act on it? Is it not better to consider all the other possible interpretations. It could be an effective way to regulate our emotion. Fourth, am I assuming a threat? Label the types of threat through labeling the relevant emotions. Beginning attack, being attacked or Mm, goals are blocked, anger, being contaminated, disgust, in, encountering danger to life, health, well-being, fear, not obtaining goals or losing something permanently, sadness, being rejected by the community, shame, violating one's own values, guilt, a valued person being taken away by someone else, jealousy, not attaining what is wanted while others are able to through more power or capacities, envy. Evaluate the likelihood that the uh, threatening event will really occur. Being in wise mind as what seems threatening at first glance is not the same once we think more about it. Think of alternative outcomes, as many as you can, as the fact of uh, generating them itself can increase your belief that they are possible. Fifth, what is the catastrophe? Think what the realistic consequences are. If the worst outcome occurs, as we often catastrophize exaggerating the facts and the possible outcomes, making a bad situation even worse. We could choose to see catastrophizing thoughts and images as 
arising and falling within the mind, remembering that the mindfulness and mm, the mindfulness of current thoughts could be helpful, even if a real catastrophe occurs. In, in, in fact, is there reality? Any fact? Is there really, in fact, any fact that we could not accept? And does catastrophizing help in any way? Imagine coping well with catastrophes in various ways for example, problem solving, coping ahead, or radical acceptance. Six, does my emotion or its intensity fit the facts? As emphasized earlier, emotions evolved as a way for us to respond effectively to different situations. We can check out if the situations we want to, to change fit uh, the emotions. In fact, if the emotions we want to change fit the actual situations, as then the emotions are likely to be useful. Sometimes the problems is not about the emotion itself, but about the intensity of the emotion. When the emotions are intense, it is difficult to see how irrational or ca catastrophic the interpretations are. And remember, emotions love themselves. The after effect of the emotions, sensitivity to threat, narrowing of attention are another obstacle to changing images and thoughts. So, at this point, we can first use crisis survival skills. For example, changing body chemistry, using destruction, self-soothing, tip skills, or doing pros and cons of remaining highly emotional. You can remember the distress tolerance skills on handouts five, six, seven, and eight. And finally, let's mention the middle of the night thinking. When we wake up at night with worries about life, but in the morning we wonder how we could believe such unrealistic thoughts. So, Later, we could learn in such occasions when waking up with those disturbing thoughts to say to ourselves, these are middle of the night thoughts and I'm going to ignore them until the morning. Has it happened to you? What could be helpful? Maybe splashing cold water on your face and apply pace breathing to distract from your thoughts for a while, you can see again handout six of the distress tolerance model. Do you have any other ideas or um, ideas on skills that may be helpful in such situations? I'm sure you know much more. Let's use those skills to wake up from our disturbing so-called nightmares, not only at night, but during the day, when we sometimes create a distorted reality and continue to live in it. Let's learn how to see the facts through the eyes of our wise mind I would like to encourage you to read later the text of the Emotion Regulation Handouts 7, 8 and 8a, as they provide the framework and visual encoding of information. And just try to check the facts.